I fully believe that Spider-Man by Miles Morales needs to happen, not just for story or plot, but to ensure that Spider-Man 3 doesn't feel rehashy. And potential spoilers for Spider-Man 3? We got teased with Doc Ock saying the final chapter as he like stops writing in a journal he has while in prison. And obviously to some of us who know about Superior Spider-Man, we know what that means. Or at least we think we know. Superior Spider-Man is very likely to happen. And considering the goblins getting teased, we're probably going to get a very clear uh, King Goblin situation. But that brings up a situation that may not hit as hard as it's supposed to if we don't get Spider-Man Miles Morales. And not even just to take on the events of the Chameleon or whatever other villain is going to be going on in the shadows. But due to Spider-Man 2 primarily focusing uh, a good portion of Act 2, like the middle of the story, on Miles versus Peter, it's going to be pretty awkward if we have another student versus mentor relation. Because that'll be three games, two in a row, that have it. The only one that doesn't have Student Mentor would be Spider-Man Miles Morales. And without Spider-Man Miles Morales 2, we get this weird point where every single Spider-Man game without the, uh, the subtitle Miles Morales is about Student versus Mentor in some way. And it, if you think about it in a way, Spider-Man 2 already kind of, uh, retreaded very similar themes as Spider-Man uh, Peter Parker and Spider-Man Miles Morales. I should probably not call it Peter Parker because it's Spider-Man 1, but you know what? I prefer the name, honestly. But Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man Miles Morales have the same themes that get shown off in Spider-Man 2, where we have Peter versus Miles. And that's Mentor vs. Student, which happens in Spider-Man 1. But at the same time, we get Spider-Man vs. his best friend, which happened in Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is just pretty funny. And I think if we don't get Spider-Man Miles Morales 2, it'll be yet another game in the series that has student versus mentor right after it just did that. And the reason why I think that'll happen, and here's my pitch on the opening of Spider-Man 3. At the end of Spider-Man Miles Morales 2, Pete comes out of retirement. Over the course of Spider-Man Miles Morales 2, Pete is gaining money. He is taking a, a say, year off maybe a few months only, to build up his money, <laughs> just get some cash flow, be able to freely go up and about more often without having to scrounge for cash every five minutes or, you know, every day. And he's also seeing a therapist. And we don't have to establish that he told his therapist his secret identity. We don't have to worry about that. Who knows if that happens or not doesn't matter. Over the course of Miles Morales 2, Pete is gaining cash, he's getting his money up, and he's seeing a therapist. He needs to work out his shit. He needs to sort it out and needs to be ready in a proper mental, mental place. Because currently, we know he's been hard nerfed by pure raw anxiety and fear and trauma. And I know some people call it cope, but I do fully believe that Peter was nerfed over the course of Spider-Man 2. Fully believe it. I'm not going to back up on it. But due to that, I think it is more than fair for that to be the primary reason for Pete to go into retirement for a little bit. Just go on break for at least a few months, and that is like 
in the time frame where Miles takes on the chameleon and whoever else might be in the game. And then in Spider-Man 3, he's back. He's been back for a little bit, not super long, but he's back. And we find out the reason why the... And we find out a small reason as to why uh, Norman and Otto's plan to probably break Otto out and like lure Peter into a trap in order to steal his body is because they were waiting for Peter the entire time. They were waiting for him because they both have him in mind. They both blame OG Spider-Man. They want him gone to a degree or to make him suffer. And I think uh, Otto's motivation should absolutely be to tear down Pete's legacy. And Otto just wants to take it over. Norman wants to take down Peter and OG Spider-Man's legacy because he's like the older one. Norman blames him more. He should know better. He should have been able to, after 10 years of Spider-Manning, he should have been able to save his boy. We can give that the reason and call it there. And I fully believe... Cut that up. Otto should absolutely be wanting revenge, but also he wants that body. He desperately wants it. And because he knows Pete, and we see through comments in recorded dialogue in Otto's lab, the comments Otto makes about Pete, how he's never really invented anything in his life. I fully believe the spider arms are gonna be a massive motivation to him, a massive sticking point for Otto. Because Otto, in jail, is gonna be looking at Peter Parker, the man he views to have done nothing with science all his life. He's just been riding Otto's backbone. He's just been getting carried the entire time. And clearly, that's his work. Otto believes it. He wants it back. Otto believes it. He wants it back. And I'd say the way we get our superior spider is during the breakout, maybe the goblin already is active. He's already in the goblin suit or whatever. Who knows? Who cares? Norman is already terrorizing people. He flies into the raft on his glider, and he starts just breaking everyone out. We could see some returning villains. Maybe the rhino's not actually dead. I don't know. No one knows at this point. And Miles arrives on the scene first. Pete close behind and let's run with the idea of miles because he gets there first he's focusing on norman and then pete arrives second and he is there to take down a bunch of the escapees he's there to web them up until that's when otto just casually limps in to a room and calls out for spider-man luring him in pete hears him and he goes over because he has still got that trauma from fighting Otto. And he's already taken down a majority of all the escapees. So he's going there. He gets lured into the room. They have a little interaction. Hello, my boy. And then Pete just goes, Long time no see, Otto. I want to talk to you about so many things, but I don't think I should. And just right then and there, the door to Otto's cell shuts. He wasn't actually blown out of it. It was just open. Norman got in there. He tricked Pete. He thought he was in a safe area. And then the room itself starts to transform into the body switching device. And then after seeing this, Pete tries to break down the door as quick as he can. But Otto has the... But Otto has this uh, weird mechanical thing link up to the back of his head, you know, in the neural center, the neural interface. And then the room starts to shake. It starts to pulse with electricity until boom, they swapped bodies, except the second they swap bodies, 
Pete's mind after swapping into Otto's body, after swapping into Otto's body, the machine takes Pete's consciousness and sticks it in a machine. Why? Because we still, I don't want to kill Pete because I don't think bringing him back as bits and pieces of <laughs> the leftover subconscious in Pete's actual body being able to be restructured and rebuilt, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. I think it's a little too nonsensical. I think it's a little too nonsensical and I think it just doesn't work as well. Pete's consciousness is able to manifest itself into the technology. He has like his own little robotic arms that he's able to use like some uh, external computer with and all that and that's how Otto was like able to communicate with Norman without actually rising suspicions with the guards or any of that all that whatever and then camera shift the scene cut we're back to Miles and he's trying to like just chase down the goblin and the second we get like the triangle over the goblin as Miles is about to like you know interact with him in some way that's when Otto catches up Otto webs him up for even just half a second. Miles stares at Otto in Pete's body, and then the camera starts to pan over. The camera starts to pan back over to Otto, and here's our first boss fight in the game. You're playing as Otto versus Miles. 